Hello Shaggers, it's your old dad Tally and Resident Evil 3 Remake, or Freemake for short, has recently turned old enough to start going to school. So in today's class, we're going to be looking at possibly the worst Resident Evil Remake that Capcom has made. First of all, we're going to recap the story. Set after the events of the Spencer Mansion, stars have split, and Jill is on some paid leave for being a bit too nosy. Suddenly, Nemesis busts through the wall, and City Escape is on the playlist. And after voiding her car insurance policy, Jill gets trapped and Carlos saves the day. Jill has to help turn on the power for the train, which involves bugs. This is disgusting! This leads to a couple of run-ins with the big man himself. A quick detour into the sewers. And a final encounter against Nemi. Definitely for real. Eventually, Jill hops on the 1015 train to Glasgow Queen Street, and much like every other train to Queen Street, there's an explosion, followed by an attack from a mutant dog. For Jill, this is the worst day of her life. For me, it's my morning commute. And after fending off a rabid animal, Jill gets some rabies and it's up to Carlos to go find a cure. Well, after he defaces the local police department of course, because even during a zombie apocalypse, all cops are bastards. Once Carlos has had his fun destroying what used to be the Raccoon Police Department, Carlos makes his way over to the Raccoon Hospital, where you guessed it, there's some secret umbrella nonsense going on. Also, there's a T-Virus vaccine. That could be useful. And to top it off, there's a hell of a last stand where Carlos has to single-handedly buy enough time for the security shutters to come down. And it has me asking, how, in the year 2020, did Capcom make a better Call of Duty Zombies than Modern Warfare 3 Zombies? And of course, what would the Resident Evil game be without the final act taking place in a secret umbrella lab? Jill learns from Tyrell that if they can replicate the vaccine then the government won't nuke the city. That's happening by the way, I forgot to mention it, there's about 12 hours until the city's blown to bits. This takes Jill up and down Nest 2, is that really what they're calling it? Nest 2? This leads to a final confrontation with the feral hentai dog, so I guess all that's left to do is deal with Nikolai, or not, I suppose Nemi does need to learn a lesson about taking a hint. finally putting down Nemesis for good. This time I'm certain for sure. And all this leaves is a last minute shootout to round off the worst weekend ever and get Jill a first class ticket to the apocalypse. Alright, let's start with the good. First of all, the gameplay was and is still pretty great. It's so good, in fact, that whenever I play Resident Evil 2's remake, I find myself trying to dodge like you can in this game. It's a hell of a time, and managing that perfect dodge still hits that particular spot that feels great 100% of the time. At this point in history, it's definitely the nicest over-the-shoulder RE game in terms of gameplay. It was tight, responsive, it flowed super well, it was all of the good buzzwords. And I gotta say, even though RE4 takes the cake in terms of gameplay, this still feels pretty darn good. You know, I did mention earlier, like, I try and dodge when I play Resident Evil 2, but in actual fact, it actually kind of made me feel a little bit worse about Resident Evil 2 in comparison. When I go back, I end up thinking, yeah, it's good, but it's not RE3's gameplay. And on top of that, I feel like all of the weapons in the game have a pretty appropriate weight to them. You know, like sometimes in games you shoot something and the weapon doesn't really react right and it takes you out the moment. Yeah, RE3 just doesn't do that. It feels great. Like, I don't exactly know what it is about it, but there's just a really nice feedback. Take the Magnum, for example. This thing feels like it could take down a horse, and when it's in my hands, I feel safe. Overall, I think just how fun this game is does a ton of hard work on replays. Like, when I boot up the game, I don't really feel like I have to learn loads or adjust to it loads. I can just get back into it real smooth, like. Now, this may also be controversial over on the old Reddit, but I also quite like all of the characters in the game too. Some people don't like how Jill was portrayed in the game, but I liked it a lot. She's got this fairly fitting vibe of being perpetually done with the situation. And it's understandable, you know. 
She's been through all this before, she's tried to expose Umbrella so that this exact thing doesn't happen, and it happened anyway. I do however feel like it kind of clashes with the whole trauma angle they've got going on. Not that trauma can't manifest in anger and irritation, but she has like two hallucinations and that's really it. But this is about what I liked, so let's go back to the good stuff. Overall, I do really like the more action-y hero version of Jill. She's this Ellen Ripley, Sarah Connor bad motherfucker who kicks ass and chews bubblegum. She's confident but not cocky. She's caring without being naive. And yeah, I was salty about the stars line being where it was. Like it would have gone really hard over the final Nemi kill. You want stars? I'll give you stars. And I think we can all agree that Carlos is pretty stellar and absolutely nails every scene he's in. In the remake, he's a smooth talker, he's pretty likeable. You know, overall in the original he was a good guy, but in this he's been fleshed out enough, given a little bit more depth. I'm a big fan, honestly. He does retroactively lose points for using the same voice for both Carlos and Resident Evil 8 Crystal. With Carlos comes Tyrell, he's the pretty cool guy in the chair character, and he's not got loads of screen time, but when he's on my screen I feel like he's a pretty chilled out guy. And that is kind of it, he's kind of like an accessory to Carlos more than he is his own character. But I like him, good guy. Nikolai comes off as a real smarmy asshole so that every time you give him his comeuppance it feels pretty good. He does spend the majority of the game just kind of weaseling himself around, getting out of sticky situations by being a bastard. But when you shoot him in the end, oh, it feels nice. And that's kind of it for what I liked. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, and I don't feel like I've gone into as much depth as I particularly could have. But let me be clear, the things I like in this game, I actually do love about the game. Right, let's just deal with the elephant in the room. A free make is a bad remake, and when I say bad remake, I mean it's really bad at being Resident Evil 3. It does a terrible job at being Resident Evil 3. In fact, it's a failure at being Resident Evil 3. And I think there are a couple of key reasons for this. One is the depth of content. The game is about as shallow as a puddle, and I'm going to talk about that next. Also, there's Nemesis, but I'm going to talk about Nemesis on its own. RE3 Remake feels like an abridged series of Resident Evil 3. For those of you too young to remember 9-11, an abridged series is a shortened down remake of something. For example, a really popular one is Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Z Abridged, where the abridged series hits the key points of the source material, but changes course a little and often has a bit of parody going on. OG Resident Evil 3 had a bunch of large interconnected areas and it does feel like you're running across a city in this game. There's tons of places to go to, the game gets loads of value from what little that it is working with. Comparing with Remake City for example though, it just somehow feels so tiny. Like the police station in 2 feels pretty big to me, even though I don't think the map is actually that much bigger. Maybe there's a scale thing going on that makes Leon and Claire feel really small, or maybe it's the way that you chip away at the police station over time. I also feel like, you know, being in a building helps justify the map being a bunch of loosely connected corridors, whereas Resident Evil 3 Remake still has that weirdly corridory feel in what's supposed to be a sprawling city. And it genuinely does disappoint me that you never go to the RPD as Jill. Like, that was such a cool part of the original game for me and you don't, you just don't do it. So I guess there's just not really a lot going on. And don't get me started on all the on-rail sequences. Probably the most egregious of them is the introduction, which is just like a 10 minute interactive cutscene. So yeah, I think between the shallow depth of the maps and so many on-rail set pieces, there's not really enough time to stop and smell the roses, and there's barely any roses to smell. Now you might say that there's replayability and there's depth in the different difficulty levels, which I'm not going to refute, there is to an extent, but what then? What do you do after your four playthroughs, the last of which I guarantee would have been a walk through hell that leaves no man unchanged? Now, I'm going to go play devil's advocate here and say I personally feel like I got my money's worth. This game dropped during lockdown when all I had to do in my time was race myself to see how fast I can beat the game. I clocked in hours grinding away while chatting to the lads, and I got those hours just playing the same couple of hours of gameplay over and over and over again. 
I don't know if I can say that any of these particularly ruin the experience, but it does definitely take points away from the overall score. Okay, let's talk about the ugly, and by ugly, I do mean Nemesis. Or more like Nemesissy, because by god is he a bitch. I'm gonna get the OG pole polishing over quickly. Nemesis was really scary in that original game. He gets a brief bit of foreshadowing before offing Brad, who we might, you know, remember as the lowest strung on the stars ladder, but that's like coming in 10th place at the biggest badass competition. Then after that, he's relentless, follows you almost everywhere you go, and always chooses violence. He's a constant source of anxiety, and I think that's the thing that makes Free make a failure to me. It's that Nemesis is bad. Like, where do we start from here? First of all, he's barely in the fucking game, often only appearing for a couple of minutes at a time and barely being more than a nuisance. There's no anxiety when he shows up, no weak ember of fear from back in the day, nothing. And that's a genuine shame, after what Resident Evil 2 did with Mr. X. Oh, man. I was so excited to, like, genuinely piss myself running through the RPD, and I get none of that. And that's its own tragedy. Unfortunately though, all bad things come in threes, which leads me on to Nemi version 2. What the hell happened here, right? Big man Looney Tunes falls into a river and comes out as the unholy spawn of a xenomorph in a Resident Evil 5 liquor. I've never seen a boss fight that gets the zoomies like this, and they loved that boss so much that they did it twice. And I just have no idea where this came from. Like, was there a time crunch? It couldn't have been laziness. You know, it could not have been the real intent behind this game to have this progression of bosses, right? And while we're on progression, let's progress to Nemesis version 3. Blob Nemesis here really is one of the final bosses of all time. I'll say that for sure. And I don't want to make it sound like it's the worst thing ever, but it is just kind of there. You pop its spots, which hurts it so much that it takes a little nap, and then you go plug in the batteries to the BFG. And I don't think I started off disliking this boss. I think I did originally like that it required you to move around and do things and be an active participant in the fight. And when you describe it like that, it does sound really cool and it does sound really engaging, but I feel like they've maybe just missed the mark on the execution. And it just feels a bit undercooked, man. All in all though, I think it's a bit of a damn shame, because if you gave this game another year to cook, it would have been great if you expand on everything that's there, give the game a little bit of room to breathe, which then gives Nemesis a bit more time to be present, and I think that's it. It's not that the game is bad, in fact, if you've made it this far into the video and you've not played it, go buy it when it's on sale, and it goes on sale fairly often. As I said, the things I like about it do a ton of heavy lifting for me. And if you can get it on the cheap, then you need to, because it is a fun time. Except Inferno. Inferno can go fuck itself. Like, yeah, the game has got its flaws. It really, really does. But here's how you fix half of them. Mindless head cannon. alright? Turn off your brain. Pretend it's not actually a Resident Evil 3 remake. If you pretend that Jill isn't Jill, and Nemesis is just some other tyrant, then it's actually just a really fun game, whose main complaint is that it's too short. And by the way, that is my main complaint above all. I just want more of this game. It always ends too soon, and by the time that I'm done, I'm just kind of left wanting like another two or three hours of game. And I could forgive a ton if we just got an extra couple hours of life out of this. And you know, it doesn't help that it's being held in the same camp as the other remakes, with 1 and 4 being the absolute best examples of how you do a remake. Like if those other games were a bit more shit, then we might not be so harsh on 3, but since the other remakes are so good, it makes 3 look worse in comparison. Which I also think is kinda unfair. So here's the overall summary. It's a fun game, fails as a remake, but succeeds in being a good experience that while worth playing, isn't worth paying full price for, and it's a must buy if it's on sale, and you can comment a preemptive thank you just now to save you coming back later. Anyway shaggers, you're all dazzle away, I didn't mean to be ranting for this long, I guess I just had a lot to say.